to go back to enforcing labor laws. I'm going to make sure that some employers go to jail for wage theft and all the other abuses that they engage in. And we're going to make it harder and harder to stop what should be the right of every American to join a union and bargain collectively through that union. It remains one of the more contentious issues in the American workplace. Whether as Hillary Clinton and others believe, unions are the key to more jobs, or as others counter, unions have too much control and all they do is protect those who should be on the street. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters believes their new initiative, Let's Get America Working, has the answers. Let's see if they can convince you. He is now the second longest serving president of the Teamsters, surpassing the reign of his late father. And what may surprise some people is use of the word bipartisan in their mission statement. I want to welcome Jim Hoffa to the hard line. And I do want to tell people here that I had spoken offline to Mr. Hoffa, said, would you prefer to be called Mr. Hoffa or Jim? He said Jim, so I don't want anybody to think that I'm showing you any disrespect. Jim, thanks for joining us. It's great to be here. Let's talk specifically about the unions themselves, because... When you say bipartisan, that struck me, because most times people hear Republicans hate the unions, want nothing to do with them. It's all about Democrats and the Democrats pushing it. Do you think you can really be bipartisan and bring the parties together to support unions? Well, I'm trying to do that right now. We have an initiative, Get America Working Again, and this is basically to repair our infrastructure. We're going to need a bipartisan Congress to do that. Uh, to have, you know, really going to cost billions of dollars. We all know about our roads. We know about the potholes. We know about how we've got to make repairs on bridges and everything that's going on in America right now. Uh, and it can't be done with these short fixes. We have to have a bipartisan approach. And right now, it's not happening. So we're reaching out to people on both sides of the aisle to say, how do we get together so that we can basically solve our problems? You know, somebody said when they see a bridge, there's no Republican bridge, there's no Democratic bridge, there's an American bridge. We've got to get our bridges fixed. We've got to get our roads fixed. We've got to start working together if this country's going to be great again. And I think that's what it is. Who doesn't want the roads to be right? Who doesn't want, uh, basically, our ports to be up to date? You know, you go to Europe and you go to places like that, they put so much money into where they have these high-speed trains. And here we're bumping along with our trains running off the tracks. We've got to change the way we do business and make sure that we're the number one country uh, in the world with regard to our infrastructure because it affects everybody, labor, business, everybody. You know, right now the Chamber of Commerce is for these infrastructure changes because business has to get their products to port. They have to have good roads. They have to have good ports. They have to make sure everything works right. Uh, and that's what it's all about. It's about transportation. You know, I'm president of the Teamsters Union. We're the largest transportation union in America right now. Uh, and over half of our members drive trucks or buses or whatever. And we're basically concerned about the fact that we're falling behind. Everybody should be behind that this is not a Democratic issue, it's not a Republican issue, it's an American issue to get us up to date. How do you then convince the people on the GOP and others who, as I mentioned here in the intro, talk about unions? And I've been a member of union before, so I can speak from experience. The people who say that all unions do is protect people who are lazy, who don't want to work, and simply just give them a job. There's no push. How do you then convince those people that the Teamsters are doing the right thing to make sure that every member is doing their job, deserves the job and should be paid that wage. Well, we have 1.4 million members, and we're a great union, and we're productive. Uh, we have one. Our biggest employer, you know, is UPS. Those guys work hard, but they make good money, and they're very productive guys. You drive a truck every day. You got to be productive. You're out on the highway by yourself. There's nobody helping you, and you got to make sure that delivery is made. You might have to drive, you know, 500 miles to make a delivery. So you're out on your own. So you know we account for what we're doing. But the answer is, it's not a matter of how bad unions are. I mean, that's a very parochial view of what's going on. The problem is we've changed our ideas of union. It used to be even going back to you know, President Nixon. You know, he agreed that unions were part of the program, and somewhere along the line about 1980 somebody threw a switch and say oh unions are all bad we're part of the process we're a countervailing force that basically helps America work together you basically have to have people working you can't have people out there that have no bargaining power that have to go whimpering to the employer to say oh can I have a nickel we can't have that well there's we a good point I wanted to bring up to you together. because and the you... answer look at UPS look at the look at the UAW with the big three they're productive they're making money 
everybody's making money? The answer is we have a rising tide, and when the tide comes up, everybody goes up. Well, that's just it. I've only got about 60 seconds left, but then how do you convince that businesses, convince the business that unions are for them? They're making a tremendous amount of money, yet they don't want to pay certain people a certain wage. How do you convince them that they need to make less money and make these people real middle-class citizens? Because they have to invest. You know, there used to be such a thing as a contract, a social contract. You show up, you work hard, you be a productive worker. You're going to be respected. I'm going to be taken care of. For some reason, that's ended right now, where people say, I don't owe anything to anybody. I'm just going to send my job to Mexico or to Japan or somewhere else. And the answer is, there's no respect anymore for people that have gone out there that work for you as an employer, that work hard every day, show up. You just can't throw those people into the trash. We've got to make sure there's respect in the job. The social contract is what we have to get back to. Jim, I only got about 20 seconds left. Who gets the support for President of the United States from the Teamsters right now? Well, it's too early. It's, I mean, I didn't see Donald <laughs> Trump coming. I didn't see Bernie Sanders coming. Can you imagine all this is going on right now? I'll tell you in about six months. Who do you, is there anybody you want to give us a hint as who you like personally? I like a lot of people personally, but we're going to wait and see. This is changing so fast. It's so dynamic. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we're going to have to see what happens because, trust me, by the time we get down to November of next year, we may have people we haven't even heard of at this point. So it's actually pretty good to go at ahead and this sit point, there. You, who, I, who would have thought that the people that are running now that are at the top of the list would be there? I didn't see that. Be coming. careful. The Donald may have unions in his, in his sights. You never know. <laughs> Jim Hoffa, thanks so much for your time. I certainly wish you a lot of luck. Let's hope that we can make it all work for America. Thank you so much for your time. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line continues.